Hello and welcome to my next little bookish video what I have read in January. So in January I have read a total of three books that is really good for me and um, three books is very good when you're so busy <laughs> and I'm very happy to have read three. So the books that I have read in January are Happy Place by Emily Henry, In Search of Mary Seacole by Helen Rappaport, Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. If you're interested in seeing what I thought to any of these three books, please stick around and have a look. The first book I read in January was Happy Place by Emily Henry. Can I just start off by saying I love how misleading that title actually is. This is not all about a happy place. So throughout this book we follow Harriet who had the perfect boyfriend in Wynn but for reasons they're not discussing they split up six months ago. Every year for one week they go to a cottage with their friend group to escape reality and act like they used to act when they were younger and carefree. But Harriet and Wynn cannot stand the thought of breaking their friends hearts and also kind of breaking up the friendship group so what can they do about that? So after years of being in love, they believe that for one week only they can lie about still being together so as not to hurt their friends' feelings. So overall, I really enjoyed this book. Um, I love how it was written as one chapter you're in the current time and then the next chapter you're going back in time. I really love books that are written like this as you have to think about how the course of events in the past are helping to shape future events and I'm always trying to create little links as to how this has affected this and what this means for this event. I find it just gets the mind working a little bit harder than it would in some other books. I found this way of recalling the timeline of events was really effective for the book and it kind of brought more to the background and the history rather than Harriet just telling us about her past relationship with Wynne and what we've kind of missed as the story begins at the end. Um, I feel like we can kind of relive all the most important moments of their relationship by going back in time. But then that hurts you all the more when things are not working out. But I found it really effective. One huge positive of this book for me was the characters. I want to be in that friendship group. I want to go on holiday once a year with these guys in this book. I found that they all felt really authentic together and they just really gelled. And I believe that every character really liked every other character. And yeah, I just wanted to be in this friend group. And then you've got Harriet and Wynne's connection. Oh my God. Yeah, you can feel it from the page. You can feel that it's real on the page. You really, really do get the feels for these two. And yeah, if you read it, you'll probably be choking up at some points because I certainly was. So I rated this book a four stars. Um, I found the characters good, the plot good, the writing good. I liked everything about it, really. The only reason it's not a five star is because I'm very picky with five stars. If I rate you a five star, that means I absolutely loved every second of the book and it's going to stay with me forever. It was very close and I did like every second of the book, but it hasn't affected me in that sort of way. So I stuck with the four star for this one. This was my first ever Emily Hemley read and I've heard she's got some other amazing books so I think I'm going to have to go and check her out after this one. The next book I read in January was In Search of Mary C. Cole by Helen Rappaport. I hope I've said that right. This book is a revealing biography of Mary C. Cole herself and it took 20 years to gather information and write. This author is obviously really interested in the life of Mary Seacole and she's worked wonders in finding out facts about Mary and also a lot of myth busting along the way. Mary Seacole is most known for her nursing aids in the Crimean War um, and she's also very well known for her compassion and her cooking. It's stated many times in the book that Mary was the most famous black person of her time um, which is a huge achievement in Victorian Britain. She regularly mixed with royals, military patrons, war veterans and these come to play a huge part later on in life when she gets herself into really bad debt and these guys help her come out of this um, and that just shows how much she was loved and respected for people to all come together and actually help her out of a really sticky situation when she helped us so much. Not long after all her noble events, um, she was actually forgotten. Only recently has she started being remembered again and she now has her very own statue. I most enjoyed reading the sections about um, Florence Nightingale and Mary Seacole's supposed rivalry. When I started reading the book, I had no idea that these two was even in the same time, which may sound silly, but 
when I think of Florence Nightingale and I think of Mary Seacole, I had no idea that they would have known who each other actually were, let alone have a supposed rivalry. I think when you think back to the start of nursing, um, obviously they've been nursing for years and years and years and years, but when you think of the start of um, professional nursing, I, I think you kind of think of Florence Nightingale in Big Letter, and she is known as the person. Um, I think Mary Seacole gets a little bit forgotten about in comparison and to know that them two kind of knew each other I think that's a really cool thing. I think one thing I did take from the book was that Florence Nightingale um, she could so easily get to where she wanted to be she offered to go out to the front line and basically help the soldiers and she was allowed straight there Mary Seacole had to fight for where she wanted to be and um, she had to self-fund herself going to Crimean War and helping the soldiers over there she didn't just get sent over. She was rejected multiple times and fought multiple times to go and help these people in need. So her compassion and her strength got her to where she wanted to be on the front line and there on the front line she became indispensable to the war. There was a couple of negatives that I found with the book. I think there's still so much to uncover about Mary Seacole. The author does write a lot of times um, maybe two versions of events and still states that she doesn't know which is actually the truth. So Mary Seacole actually wrote a memoir um, when she was still alive and this memoir was found to have many untruths and omissions um, as she quite clearly wanted to keep her private life private but this created a very unclear narrative of her life and a lot of the time the author is actually trying to myth bust or get the right narrative but she often can't do that and I felt like sometimes I was left very unclear about which was true and I found that quite frustrating when reading as I know that she can't know everything about somebody as somebody she has died of course and you can't go straight to that person and say you know which is true um, but I found it quite frustrating to read and um, I just wanted to know which was right but Mary Seacole wanted to keep that private life private and years and years and years and years and years later we still can't tell which is true so she's done a very very good job at doing that another huge negative of mine was that i found the um the historical background too in depth i think around 50 percent of this book was actually spent describing um backgrounds of historical events and things and i felt like it could have done without that again the author has put so much time and effort obviously into finding out all these facts and detailing it so well um, but I just felt it made the book feel a lot longer than it had to be. If you like these sorts of in-depth details, then you could really enjoy this book. But for me, it was, just, it was just too long. I rated this book three stars. I really enjoyed learning more about Mary Seacole than what I knew before. But I did feel like it just felt too long in places. And a lot of information was in there that I felt I didn't really need to know. But overall, this is a truly, very thoroughly written biography. The third and final book I read in January was... Look at that. Look at that. So cute. Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Here we follow a character called Evangeline Fox and right at the start of the book she finds out that her perfect partner is about to marry somebody else. She is desperate to stop this wedding, she is heartbroken and therefore she strikes up a deal with a very charismatic but very wicked Prince of Hearts. In exchange for his help, he asks for three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing. But Evangeline quickly realises that playing with an immortal is very dangerous. I just love when you go into a book not knowing anything at all and you get transported into this magical world where anything is possible, anything can happen at any moment and that is this book. It kind of gives me Alice in Wonderland vibes where absolutely anything is possible. These types of books are my absolute favourite where you are just transported into an entire other world and I find myself not being able to put them down because I just want to keep going and I want to see where we're going next and I want to see how the world is created and I just want to read everything really fast. I had this book finished in two days which for me is very fast, very fast. And can I just say how much I loved Jax, the Prince of Hearts? So he is supposed to be like this mysterious, he's obviously a villain, um, someone not to be trusted, mysterious character. I think I would fall in love with this guy eventually. I love when an author can do that to you. When you end up liking somebody you're really not supposed to like and they're supposed to be this huge villain um, and the narrative is pushing you towards not liking them but they've done such a good job of the character that you still want the best for them and you still really like them. I think that is the best thing an author can do. 
and it makes for some very good reading. I don't want to ruin absolutely anything of this book for any of you guys. So if you like a magical world, an enchanted world full of prophecies, vampires, potions, love, all of that, you need to read this book. I rated this book a 4.5 out of 5. I just didn't want it to end and when it did end I was so happy to read that it was part one of a three-parter. I've already got number two waiting. Are you here? Yes you are. Oh. Here is number two ready and waiting. So I just can't wait to get back into the world of the magnificent north. I will be going there very very soon. So three books this month read and um, it's not the most a lot of people can read three books in probably three days but I am very busy at the moment obviously if you've watched our other vlogs you've seen that we're moving house and um, I'm at uni and I'm about to go on placement I've got an 11 week nursing placement coming up so that is stress and um, obviously we're a family all that comes with that and I'm working part-time as well so three books for me I'm happy with that Um, yeah so let's see what the month of February can bring I think I already have two books that I definitely want to read in Feb. So obviously, I've just showed you this one. This is number two of um, Stephanie Garber's three book. Um, it's called The Ballad of Never After, and it follows on from this one, um, Once Upon a Broken Heart. So I feel like this is something I definitely want to read while this one is fresh in my mind. There's no point waiting too long. So I think I'll probably do one or two more books, and then I'll go to it. The other book I really want to read in Feb is... All the light we cannot see. It is a hefty book. I think it's about 500 pages. What is it? Without without ruining anything for myself. Imagine if I read something that I really don't want to read. Oh, 530, I've got to. Um, yeah, I think this looks really good. Open your eyes and see what you can with them before they close forever. The walled city by the sea, where father and daughter take refuge when the Nazis invade Paris. The radio waves that crisscross the air, bringing a long lost voice and new worlds to her agoraphobic great uncle. It just sounds so good. I can't wait. I think this one might be the book I pick up next. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment on anything that you think I might like to read. And also let me know if you've read any of the books that I have just reviewed for you guys there. Thank you for watching. Bye.